Welcome to the debate. Today we're going to dive into a uh, pretty significant technical report on the Kimi linear architecture. This is a new hybrid model that's really trying to tackle the scaling issues we see in large language models. Mm -hmm. It combines something called Kimi Delta Attention or KDA that's a well, a refined linear attention module with multi-head latent attention, MLA, which is, you know, more like your standard full attention. And the claims are uh, pretty bold. They're saying it outperforms typical full attention models while being drastically more efficient, like up to six times faster decoding and 75% less KV cache needed for really long sequences. Yeah, it's a fascinating paper. It really throws down the gauntlet, doesn't it? Challenges some long-held assumptions about the... Uh the trade-offs between linear and full attention. We sort of accepted this dichotomy, speed and memory savings with linear versus context and quality with quadratic. Exactly. And its success really forces us to ask a fundamental question, I think. Does this Kimi delta attention, the KDA part, actually overcome the, uh, the inherent expressivity limits and finite state problems that have always plagued linear attention? You know, through its specific design, the fine-grained gating, the special update rule, or, and this is the other side, is the really impressive performance mostly down to the fact that it's a hybrid, that 3 to 1 KDA to MLA ratio is key, and maybe just some incredibly clever hardware-focused engineering? That's precisely the debate, isn't it? Where does the credit lie? I lean towards the latter view. I think the results re-underscore that you need this hybrid structure and you need top-notch engineering to kind of well, work around the fundamental theoretical limits of linear attention, not necessarily erase them. Those limits are still there, fundamentally. See, I take a different stance. I believe KDA itself, its core mechanics, represents a genuine step forward, an intrinsic architectural improvement that actually raises the ceiling on what linear attention components can do, making them capable of things we used to think only quadratic attention could handle. Okay, so my position really hinges on what makes KDA different from, say, its predecessor, Gated Delta Net, or GDN. Uh, linear attention, at its heart, works a bit like an RNN, right? It accumulates information into a fixed size state. Now, previous attempts like GDN used a pretty coarse gate, maybe a single scalar value per head, like a master dimmer switch for that head's memory. KDA, well, it scraps that. It brings in this channel-wise gating. So instead of one switch, imagine like an independent volume knob for every single feature dimension in that memory state. Okay, that's a useful analogy for the mechanism. But the impact? Well, the impact is huge, I think. It lets KDA manage that finite state memory with much, much finer control. Each feature dimension gets its own learnable rate of forgetting. This isn't just about efficiency. It's about representational power. And the paper shows this empirically, right? KDA consistently beats GDN and Mamba2 on those tricky synthetic tasks that really push memory. Palindrome, MQAR, it demonstrates KDA can, and I'm quoting here, selectively forget irrelevant information while preserving crucial memories more precisely. To me, that sounds an awful lot like intrinsically addressing a core memory limitation. I do acknowledge the improvement in the gating mechanism. That fine grain control is definitely a step up. But um, I'd be hesitant to declare the fundamental expressivity problem completely solved based on that. Look, Despite KDA's performance on those synthetic benchmarks, purely linear structures theoretically still bump up against that finite state capacity ceiling when you're dealing with, you know, truly massive, sparse, long sequence data in the wild. The success of Kimi Linear in practice, I think, rests on two pillars that are designed to compensate for this theoretical challenge. First, as you mentioned, the inclusion of those periodic full attention MLA layers that's not just a nice to have. The paper explicitly states the three to one hybrid ratio was chosen because long context retrieval is the primary bottleneck for pure linear attention. It implies pure KDA wasn't enough. Second, the efficiency aspect is just staggering. The custom KDA kernel is nearly twice as fast as the generalized DPLR formulation it's based on. That level of hardware specific optimization suggests that well, brilliant engineering and circumventing hardware limits are just as responsible for the final result, perhaps even more so than the inherent expressive power of KDA alone. Hmm. 
outlets see it as circumvention. Let's dig into that channel-wise gating a bit more. I believe moving from head-wise to channel-wise decay isn't just a tweak, it's a, well, a critical conceptual advance. It allows KDA to function as the primary position-aware operator in the whole architecture. How? Well, this channel-wise decay effectively acts like a learnable, data-dependent, multiplicative positional encoding, which is interesting because it gets around the strict orthogonality constraints you see in things like rope. By making the KDA layers responsible for handling recency bias, the architecture actually lets the full-attention MLA layers operate without any position encoding or no PE as they call it. The MLA layers can just focus on semantic content. This division of labor, the structural delegation, to me proves KDA is handling a job encoding position and recency over potentially vast spans that linear models traditionally struggled with. And it does it well enough to take that burden off the MLA layers. That feels like an intrinsic functional breakthrough. Okay, you're making a strong case for that division of labor. Positioning KDA is handling the positional side. But if KDA truly represents the kind of expressivity breakthrough you're suggesting, why did their own ablation studies find that pushing the linear component further, going from that seemingly optimal 3.1 ratio to, say, 7.1 or even 15.1 KDA to MLA, actually resulted in worse validation perplexity? Considerably worse, in fact. The evidence in the paper seems to suggest that the model still needs that global context refresh from the full attention layers to generalize well across different tasks. The MLA layers provide this uh, uncompressed global view, which seems crucial for preventing performance drops, especially in challenging retrieval scenarios. So yes, KDA might handle local feature-level memory brilliantly, but for those really long-range global interactions, it seems you still need that quadratic attention safety net. That 3.1 ratio feels less like just an efficient choice and more like a practical necessity driven by quality concerns. And this brings us back to the kernel design, the DPLR structure. I think this focus on practical necessity is reflected there too. KDA uses a specific constrained version of the diagonal plus low rank formulation. Now DPLR, for listeners, is basically the math describing how the model updates its fixed size memory state over time. In the general DPLR setup, you have sort of independent variables controlling these low rank updates. KDA, however, imposes a pretty strong constraint. It essentially ties both the A and B variables in the update, a D at B T T, directly to the input key K. Now, this simplification was clearly an engineering win. It cut down the necessary computations, uh, specifically the second level chunk matrix maths from four steps to two. It helped with numerical precision issues. And as we said, nearly doubled the kernel speed compared to generalized DPLR. But by streamlining the update role this way, you have to wonder if they traded off potential richness. Did they prioritize kernel speed and stability over potentially more complex model interactions that a less constrained DPLR might have allowed for, especially for difficult recall tasks? It looks like a pragmatic trade-off, favoring efficiency. I'm not sure I accept the sacrifice framing there. You're suggesting a loss of function. But the report itself argues that KDA's constrained PDLR is an optimization that explicitly preserves the core mathematical properties of the classical delta rule. They state its representational capacity aligns with the generalized PDLR. They just cut out redundant computations. It's not less expressive, just, well, leaner. And furthermore, these efficiency gains aren't some secondary benefit. They are arguably the enabling factor, overcoming the hardware bottleneck, the I.O. limits, that is, overcoming the practical limitation of linear attention. The fact that Kimi Linear can handle much larger batch sizes during decoding, that it hits, what was it, 6.3 times faster time per output token at a million tokens, that means the high quality it achieves is actually usable at the scale needed for real applications. Without that kernel efficiency, the theoretical expressivity of the channel-wise gate, however good, would just hit a wall in deployment. The DPLR optimization is what unlocks KDA's potential in the real world. And one last point, we need to look beyond just perplexity scaling curves. Kimi Linear demonstrates superior learning dynamics, particularly later in the training pipeline. Yes, it outperforms MLA baselines in pre-training and SFT, but the really convincing part for me is the reinforcement learning phase. The data shows it improves faster and reaches higher scores on tough reasoning benchmarks like Math 500 and Amy 2025 during RL.
That suggests something deeper is happening, a genuine improvement in memory and reasoning capabilities enabled by KDA, not just a speed up allowing more trial and error. It learns better. The RL performance is impressive. I grant you that. But I think the most parsimonious explanation loops back to the hybrid architecture solving the bottleneck issue, which then enables more effective exploration that scale during RL. We have to be careful to distinguish the two types of efficiency reported. First, there's the core model quality scaling. Looking at their scaling law fits, figure five, I believe, Kimi Linear showed only about uh, 1.16 times better computational efficiency compared to an MLA baseline trained optimally for compute. Now that's good, it's a gain, but it suggests the fundamental relationship between compute spent and quality achieved isn't radically altered. The core scaling behavior seems broadly similar to full attention. But second, you have the inference efficiency, the 6x decoding speedup, the 75% cache reduction. That's the revolutionary part, the engineering triumph. This allows the agent, during RL, to explore much longer, more complex sequences of thought or action, far faster and cheaper than an MLA model could. So the better reasoning performance in RL, I'd argue it's largely a consequence of the model's inherent quality finally being unleashed by removing the inference bottleneck. It's a practical accessibility for agentic scaling, which was previously blocked by latency and memory. The win is the speed mitigating the limits, letting the quality show, rather than a fundamental shift in the underlying states-based scaling law itself. So in conclusion, I maintain that Kimi Linear, powered by the innovations in KDA, that precise channel-wise gating, and the optimized DPLR demonstrates that linear attention can be engineered into a truly expressive position-aware component. It's not just patching holes, it's competing with and in some demanding scenarios, potentially surpassing full attention. This, I think, paves a clear path towards LLMs that are both high quality and genuinely efficient to deploy. And I'd conclude that Kimi Linear is undoubtedly a landmark achievement, but its success is primarily rooted in brilliant engineering and the necessity of hybridization. It validates the strategy of carefully blending fixed state linear layers with periodic global attention. The dramatic practical benefits, the speed, the memory savings, show that, for now, the most effective way to build these next-gen LLMs involves pragmatically mitigating the inherent theoretical limits of purely linear attention through smart architectural design rather than having completely solved them at a fundamental level. Ultimately, what this Kimi Linear Report does is shift the conversation, doesn't it? It moves us past arguing if linear attention can even compete, towards a more nuanced discussion about how to best balance expressive capacity, like KJ's fine-grained approach, with the absolute necessity of deployment efficiency, like the hardware-optimized processing. Finding that optimal hybrid balance seems key for the future of scalable LLMs. Clearly, there's a lot more work to be done in understanding exactly how these pieces fit together. Today, we're diving into something that feels like a real breakthrough in AI. It's a new architecture called Kimi Linear, and it's designed to solve one of the most fundamental problems holding back large language models, the attention bottleneck. This could be a huge step forward in making these models way more efficient and a whole lot more powerful. All right, so here's our game plan. First, we're gonna really understand the problem we're trying to solve. What exactly is this attention bottleneck? Then, we'll meet the solution, Kimi Linear and get into its secret sauce, something called KDA. After that, we'll look at the cold, hard data. Does it actually work? And finally, we'll ask the big question. What does this all mean for the future of AI? Okay, so let's set the stage. We keep asking AI to do more and more complex things, right? Like analyze an entire company's financial reports or have a conversation that lasts for hours. Well, it turns out when you do that, these models hit a massive fundamental wall. To put it in really simple terms, why can't an AI just, you know, read War and Peace in one go and get it? The answer, as it turns out, is all about how they pay attention. So the main culprit here is a mechanism called softmax attention. 
Now, think of tokens as little pieces of words. For every single new piece of a word the model processes, it has to look back and compare it to every single other piece that came before it. This means if you double the length of the text, you don't just double the workload, you actually quadruple it. The computational needs just explode and you create this insane bottleneck. And this is exactly where the Kimi team comes in with their solution, Kimi Linear. It's an architecture built from the ground up to smash through that scaling problem, but, and this is the important part, without throwing performance out the window. Now, here's what's so clever about this. Kimi Linear isn't a pure linear model. Historically, those have kind of struggled with quality. No, this is a hybrid. It masterfully mixes super efficient linear attention layers with just a few of the old school, powerful, full attention layers. So you get the best of both worlds. You get the speed and you get the accuracy. And they've got it down to a pretty specific formula. For every one layer of that classic heavy duty attention, they slot in three layers of their new, super efficient linear attention. This simple design choice has a huge impact. It can cut down the memory needed by up to 75%, all while making sure the really important big picture information can still move freely through the model. So what is it that makes those efficient layers so darn special? Well, this is where we get to the real secret sauce of Kimi Linear. It's an innovation they call Kimi Delta Attention, or KDA for short. Okay, the technical paper calls KDA an extension of an older idea, gated delta net. But the key breakthrough phrase here is finer grained gating mechanism. What does that mean? Well, think of it as giving the model a much, much more precise set of controls over its own memory, what to hang on to and what it can afford to forget. And this slide just illustrates that difference perfectly. The older models, they used a coarse headwise gate. It's basically like a single big on-off switch for a whole chunk of memory. But KDA, it introduces a channel-wise gate, giving every single feature its own independent dial for how quickly it fades. It's literally the difference between a single light switch for a room and a full-on audio mixing board with hundreds of sliders. And this isn't just some fancy theory. KDA is engineered from the ground up to be blazingly fast on modern GPUs. Under the hood, it's using all these clever tricks, grouping information in chunks, compressing it, and using some advanced math to slash the number of calculations needed. The bottom line is, it's just built for speed. So, the theory is cool, the engineering is smart, but does it actually work? Now we get to the proof. How does Kimi Linear stack up in a fair, head-to-head -head fight against the other big architectures out there? Well, let's take a look. On the RULR benchmark, which is a really tough test for understanding long documents, Kimi Linear doesn't just win, it wins decisively. It's got a significant lead over both the standard full attention model and the previous hybrid model. The takeaway here is so important. It's not just more efficient, it's actually more accurate. And the efficiency gains, they're just staggering. When you ask it to process a million tokens, that's what we call pre-filling, Kimi Linear is nearly three times faster than the full attention model. It gets the job done in 20 seconds, while the other model is still chugging along at a full minute. But this, this is the number that really makes you sit up, over six times faster. We're talking about decoding, the process of actually generating the answer. This is a complete game changer for anything that needs to think and respond in real time, like the next generation of AI agents. So you've got superior performance and these massive, massive efficiency gains. You have to step back and ask, could this be the new gold standard? And you know, the authors themselves aren't shy about it. They make this bold claim right in their paper's abstract. They say, Kimi Linear is designed to be a drop-in replacement for what we have now. That's a huge deal. It means you don't have to tear everything down and start over to get these benefits. So let's just quickly wrap up the key takeaways. One, you get better performance on the hard stuff. Two, you get incredible gains in speed and memory. Three, it's designed to be compatible with existing systems. And four, maybe most excitingly, this really feels like it unlocks the door for a new generation of AI that can process and remember just enormous amounts of information. And that really brings us to our final thought-provoking question. For years, this quadratic scaling problem has been a hard wall, a real limit on what we could even dream of building. Now that wall has been smashed. So the question is, what's on the other side? What new frontiers can AI finally begin to explore?